Hello and welcome to another part of the Urgency Driver Series. Now, I'll give you a brief explanation before we begin of why I'm in the Renault Premium. As you know, the third part of the series is actually in the rubbish section of the uh, Urgency Driver of the playlist now. I did have a lot of sound problems then, but thanks to Oddball and English Bob, they're now sorted. So I've decided to feature this truck again, but unfortunately I cannot get the same route as what was on before. But this is an identical horsepower truck and, and with the same gearbox. It's the Renault Premium. It's got 380 horsepower and it's a 12 speed box. And we are going from Hamburg to Amsterdam today Hamburg's where we dropped off in the previous episode in the Volvo so I'll just bring up the map here and down through Germany and just round into Amsterdam I'll do the discoverables while I'm there you go I know that's a daft deal because I've done this before but that deal could be very important later on uh, I'm planning to do so it's 252 miles I'll tell you a little bit uh, about the truck as we go and the my thoughts and opinions on them now get loaded in here drive safe So, show you today's cargo. Didn't realise we got matching truck and trailer for once. And Turn right. Out this journey, I'm hopefully going to dispel some myths of uh, Renault. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. Now, Renault trucks have the headquarters. I think it's in Lyon, and. They've been on since Volvo since early 2000 and that became about throughout takeovers and mergers of with Volvo trucks wanting a stronger foothold in North America so they did a deal to buy Mack trucks and because Mack trucks had a controlling stake in Renault at the time they then became the owners of Renault some of the Renaults do we use Volvo derived engines in them so why people not Renault I don't know but as we go along I'm going to give you some of my thoughts about the Renault trucks some good points and some bad points well the plane the ugly they with customizations that don't look that brilliant but Keep left, and then turn left. They are no worse for the looks and the customization stakes as say the IV Australis which I've already turn covered. Left. There's two different levels of trim available in them, and none of them has a... I'll get back to that. See, that's a uh, thing with this game, right? See me there. Current wheels well across the line on green. I couldn't move, so stood where I am. Get clapped with a fine. That's something you need to sort out. Because you can be as much as one millimetre over. 
often you get fined and then on some lights you don't get fined at all and here presto it's starting to rain now Right. The power of this truck is 380 horsepower and I'm pulling 22 tons. Wait. Turn right. For certain people, this is Squirrel X, I can say these are underpowered. Yes, they're not as powerful as some of the trucks in the game, but they're not that bad. But there's a good trade off with these. They're fairly economical now. True. Different profiles and things and get like profiles going to completion the first truck Gosh, please mind the speed limit I ever drove an ETS 2 that I own was Renault Premium it was identical to this one it was 380 horsepower it had a 12 speed gear but I put a retarder on mine and this one hadn't because I had a look in the things for this truck and I did over 100,000 miles in that truck and I had no bother at all with it in the game it pulled everything but obviously I stayed off the heavier stuff because any truck the 4x2 chassis would struggle but loads like this no problem So, we, you know, there's a couple of choices of cabs, cab heights available in them. Caution, please mind the speed limit. Engines, start at the 380, there's 430 horsepower and then the largest one that they offer is uh, 460 horsepower. Uh, with the gearboxes there's Six speeds with a white retarder, twelve speeds with a without retarder, and then there's a ZF16 speed. So the fuel tank capacity on our 4x2 is 1000 litres. So it's on par with some of the similar trucks of the generation because these are an old truck now and you haven't been able to get them new for about oh since about 2013 I believe or something like that and it's now 2019 but still buy them brand new in the game they've got a little bit more horsepower than some of the starter trucks but not as much as others but they may the quirkiness of them that's fine. No. They're a lot more capable of truck and in my opinion they're a lot better than the Magnum is, which is the biggest ugliest truck in the game, but so the chassis choice is available obviously there's four by two is this the six by two, six by two four and all derivatives thereof. And then there's the 6x4, which is useful for pulling like heavier loads and things like that. So, there's Show Me, I don't know if it's been updated, but Show Me has done a mod for one of these that's available on the SCS forums. I don't know if it's updated to the current version yet, but most of his other trucks I've been by now. Different things in the truck now. Interior trim levels. There's a choice of two, but there is not much difference between them, so... And none of them have a built-in sat-nav, so... If you're specking one, just stick with a basic trim, because there's not much difference in them so the dials and things are exactly the same got a fuel gauge on the left 
temperature gauge in the middle and then you've got your air pressure and air tanks these and then in the digital display on the left you've got your outside temperature and the time that it is in the game and then you've got a good size ref counter prominent green band on it and with the Renault if you uh, it, this is not the auto one but if you engage the retarder you get blue light showing up around the edge of your ref count to let you know that it's on I'll say that doesn't work with the auto when you got your retarder set to come on automatic you have to put it on manually yourself below that there's a digital speedo there's no analog speedo dial in this one it's just a digital display which is quite prominent quite big and quite easy to see now on the right hand display you get what gear you're in and you've got your what your cruise control set up then you've got like a fuel gauge there's a temperature gauge what mileage your truck's done is your oil temperature and your oil level not that that makes much difference in this game because you don't go on top, top of your oil and what have you so and on the next one you've got your fuel how much you've got left and approximately what range you will go and then your economy remember I'm running in litres per hundred miles not kilometres so 100 miles is 160 kilometres so that's maybe why it seems a bit high to some people but that's not bad where it's doing, doing at the moment it'll come down a bit because we're cruising a little bit and there's good weight on this truck for a small engine anyway and then we're back to the first display again so Now with these you can put a racing paint job on them that comes as standard with the default game with the truck which so celebrates like the truck racing successes of Renault uh, around the era when these came out so. Now This is the default seating position, I'm older than anything on F4. You see, it's quite a good position. The mirrors are nice in this truck, they're nice and big, and you can see them. And the unique feature which I really do like in Renault, which I think a few more manufacturers could have done. See where, in the centre of the windscreen, there's a mirror looking down over, and a lot of trucks have it on the opposite side of what you're driving on, so you have to turn your head to look at it now. If you're playing with multi monitors, that's fine because you can see these anyway. But I'm only on a single 24 inch monitor, so handy. But that's quite handy if you're coming up to say traffic lights or a junction or anything. And you can check that mirror Gosh, to please see mind the speed limit. if you're over the line or not with them. So, but you say the economy isn't bad on them. So, um, the, the final one underpowered, so yes, the basic, yes, they are a bit ugly. A lot of people don't like the dash in them, but a lot of people base the prejudices on what you use one because uh, Squirrel is a well known streamer on Twitch and YouTube, H. Reynolds with a passion, so a lot of people have been influenced by this decision but that anybody to do is even if it's in quick jobs or something don't have to own one quick job right, do a couple of jobs with then them exit right. and then you'll come to realize that they may be not as bad as what people make out now exit right they have the same flaws with the gearboxes as a lot of the trucks Turn have right. because I'm driving manual so it doesn't make much difference but in automatics now a lot of trucks, the older ones do this. 
They're very slow in shifting up and down when you need to. The whole gear's for too long in automatic, but that's just thing with any truck, no matter what make gearbox they're having in the game. But if you can drive manual, because you get far more control with them as well. Because all I've found, if you're driving manual, you get a little bit better economy out the trucks as well. Give my bugbear about traffic lights in this game, as you've seen there. You just don't get fine, and you're totally innocent of these things. So, and that's one thing that's been the same for all the versions of the game which I've played and come across, even the predecessors of these games, the way which Renault was known as Runner in the previous versions. With the, uh, I think there's a, there was at one time about being updated. One by Cyrus the Virus. Now I don't recommend these truck mods, but I know some people do. There's done a Renault Major, which was like sort of a predecessor to this model. Now a fair few flaws in that mod of which was where normally in a lot of the trucks of this generation and the newer ones now you change the gear about 15 1600 revs in one then but if you put the revs on in one of his trucks up to that the, the rev counters are very inaccurate in some of his trucks and also the engine brakes squirrel a lot which means that they're either too powerful or something's not quite right with the physics what he's got his mods set up at so but as I say with mods I'm not reviewing mods at all I'm just driving stock standard SCS trucks Go with no mods on. On, the pro on this profile so form your own opinion on that and the reason why I've got a job. Right, this is the uh, first job that became available in the sort of that would work with the series. Now, if further on and they decide to put a mod in for a truck, it'll probably be a DAF one. Now, X XBS's DAF mods aren't generally available in the UK dealers, so. Uh, normally get them from Amsterdam it's same with some of the moddy trucks you can't get them in the UK dealers you have to get them from Europe so, so Amsterdam's good for Volvo uh, sorry good for DAF Volvo ones Luxembourg's very good for get Volvo mods that aren't available in the UK dealers Scania obviously the Stockholm Gotham Gothenburg is another one for Volvo and um, they would do the trucks like get them from a European dealer rather than the UK one now that's just some programming the mods and what have you so get per driving so if you're going to be driving a lot in Europe and you're in Britain you can get away with it my preference would be to go left hand drive but if you the idea of left hand drive I think it's unpatriotic there's all this right hand drive trucks because there's right and left hand drive interiors available in all the trucks in the standard one so it doesn't really matter so where the speedos are marked in kilometres and some of them are marked in miles an hour now MAN man, no matter what side you drive on that, all their speedos map in kilometres. Renault it doesn't matter because they're digital. So if you're going to set in kilometres per hour, it'll show kilometres per hour in the middle. And um, if it's on miles per hour like mine is, it'll show miles per hour. There we 
we've got uh, 35 miles to go so keep left say like we might and continue straight on I'm chucks I don't really go biased against too many of the makes so I find good and go bad, straight bad on. points in them all and I've been pointing out but they say the only way you can get a sat nav in this truck is if you buy the cabin accessories pack you can have one in the windshield corner or you can go down the road to downloading Sissel's mega pack that's available on the workshop that adds uh, good a load more dots in the cab so you can put good range of toys in them but so I'm showcasing the trucks as they come in the game so I haven't got a mod to to alter the trucks in the quick jobs because there used to be one that was available that used to put different bits and pieces in that I don't know if that's still available now or not so And <coughs> with me doing the shorter quick jobs, I don't have any need to go to sleep. But as you see in the display there, which I've left on, the bed icon is slowly filling up with blue. So I've got fatigue on, I've got the realistic air brakes on, realistic fuel consumption, and like that just to make it as realistic as possible so, game economy I'll go into that in uh, my opinions on the default game economy in another video because we're getting close to destination now so by the way uh, Captain Critchburn has a stock sound mod for one of these right. which does alter it a little bit right. now that mod forms the basis of a nut, uh, the Renault Premium turn stock right. sound mod forms the basis of uh, a mod he and uh, else did they reworked it slightly and Basically, the say the stock sound what you get off Critchburn, Critchbomb, is the Volvo default Volvo V and L in ATS. If you choose to run that, and uh, as for the improvement which you can make if it's still available on the workshop is you can get uh, actually a HD dash mod for these it just make, it doesn't alter what displays you get it just makes them look a little bit better than what they are to say that weird little fluffy noise you can hear that's the exhaust brake because I say this truck doesn't have a retarder it's unusual for Renault because the entry level one that you buy with the default gearbox does and that there isn't much choice over these trucks is the default paint job yes if you get the Skins, the default built-in ones. Keep left. Use those, then turn left. where like some trucks have a good few like different colours. You can just pick a uh, nice blue or a green. Those aren't available. You have to go. I think the basic one's grey. There's maybe white. Uh, that's about it so you'll end up most of the time using the custom colour if you want a different coloured truck turn left uh. turn right and then turn
turn right. Turn right. It's all over now. So if I can park this trailer today, because I made a little bit of a mess on the some of the previous videos of this bit. So, that's the Renault Premium 380 horsepower 22 ton. Did I have any problems with it? No, I didn't. So, there you go. Um, it's up to you to form your own opinions on these trucks. So, as I said, I don't mind the Premium. I don't like the Magnum much, as you probably have seen already. If you've watched that video. So, just unload this and see how well we actually did. Another perfect delivery there, so... so I've got to level 7 now, and... Up there. Right, and that concludes today's video, which is... It'll be labelled as part 12, brackets, part 3 remade, so next time come back with another video I shall pick a load up from Amsterdam in a different make model of truck which I haven't covered yet so that's it for now 10 10 for now stay safe on them roads don't have too many accidents and goodbye